You're going. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to take two of the Google Hangout. It, it seems that we have more people than we expected on this Hangout, so it's, it's crashing it. Uh, somewhere over 330 people, I think, are currently listening to this. So we want to jump right in and get, get, get Amy introduced and just let you hear her story. And then also, uh, Renata was able to come on last minute and, and share her story as well. So with that, with that, with that said, the foundation launch is going, going better than we expected. We have roughly, well, one second. You calling, yeah. you calling my Skype? Uh, yeah. Hey, call? Oh, no. Oh, sorry, dude. Never mind. Um, sorry, guys. Skype issue. <laughs> anyway, with that said, the foundation launch is going, is going wonderfully well, better than expected. Uh, we've got roughly 350 or 60 uh, students inside the platform right now, and we'd love to have roughly around 500. And so we're hoping that Hangouts like this and other things can get you guys the information you need in order to decide yes or no either way on the foundation. With that said, the previous intro with Amy was, I think, perfect. I don't want to say it again because I think I'd probably screw up what I already did. So Amy, welcome to this Hangout. Thank you. So we're ready to roll. Sorry, I'm just hopping on here right now. Ready yeah, we are. And then I also want to introduce Renata briefly. So. Renata joined the foundation as a, as a lumberjack in New Zealand, and she would boss big, beardly, bearded dudes around all day, just bossing them around like a total boss. And then she'd come back home and get on the Internet and start her Internet business and turn into a total insecure six-, seven-year-old girl, if you will. And she started out that way, and she's like, Dane, I don't know if I had no, what it, I don't, I don't know if I know how, how, what it takes to do this. My identity is that of lumberjack. And so we did some identity shifting with her now. And while Amy built a software business, and she's just getting it off the ground now a year later instead of six months, Renata has not built software, and instead she's been selling custom direct response websites, and she's planning to travel the world with her husband here over the next year. So uh, both women here did not complete the program successfully in six months, if you will, but they're massive successes, as you see in their, from their perspective. And I couldn't be happier with where they're at, and I think they would agree. So uh, with that said, Renata is the more timid, turned into badass entrepreneur, whereas Amy kind of always knew her strength. Renata learned how to transform her strength beyond what she just did. Renata, does that sound accurate? Yeah, definitely, yep. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> yeah. So, I definitely think I could do it at the start. Yeah, beautiful. So we have these amazing, beautiful women on, both completely different perspectives, both completely different results, both, I think, uh, completely happy with, with where they're at after the program. And so I want to jump in first with Amy. And Amy, you said you had about six things that you wanted to work through and, and, and share with people on this Hangout. Is that Was that correct? Yes. Do you want to say anything before you get into those six things with Renata? Um, no, we're ready to roll, man. We're totally ready. I'll get out of your way. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to talk about was our mindset before the foundation and, um, and during the foundation and how there was a lot of shifting and Dane just referenced Renata and... Um, she has an incredible transformation, so I'm, I'm more excited for her to talk about this aspect, but I'll just chime in with um, my, my mindset before the foundation. I'm a super high achiever, and so it was, for me, it was all about um, executing on the idea that I had and whatever it was going to take to get me to that idea. And so um, about a year ago, came up with this idea and thought, super, I need to now know something about technology. I'm unconventional, so I wasn't going to go to a college course. And about three years later, uh, Dane Maxwell, his interview with uh, on Mixergy came across my desk. And I thought, perfect, I'm totally in. Now, you heard the intro, and he made me sound slightly like a stalker. Now, someone gave me his cell phone number. And so, being the... <clears throat> 
achiever that I am, I just decided that I would just call the man who could decide whether I was going to be part of the program or not. So I called him, seemed logical enough to me. And um, so, yes, I was accepted to the foundation. Um, but for me, getting into the foundation, it was all about like getting to my goals and dreams. And I knew that what was in the foundation, the content was what I needed. Um, and was it all that I needed? Was it was it enough? Was it too much? I didn't know, but it was at least totally 10 steps in the right direction toward my goals and dreams. Um, and then I got into the foundation and got way more than I bargained for as far as mindset and raising my self-awareness and being able to develop myself personally. And uh, it's been an incredible, incredible journey, the best year of my life by far. And one of the reasons it's been amazing is because of Renata. She and I are super best buds. And uh, we met last December for the first time we talked on the phone. So Renata, why don't you talk about your mindset before the foundation and during? You're muted right now, just so you know. There I go. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, sound lovely. <laughs> um, so yeah, before the foundation, um, I was a bit of a hermit outside work. <laughs> I'd never do anything like do a Google Hangout with a bunch of people that could see me. My camera's not working at the moment, otherwise you could see me. But, um, but now I do heaps of public speaking. I go and speak at high schools and um, all kinds of stuff that it's just totally different. I play team sports again now and ride motorbikes and all the stuff that I used to do 10 years ago that I just, yeah, I just didn't have the confidence to get out there and do stuff. And since the foundation, now I do. It's just a totally different life. Really cool. And, um, yeah, meeting Amy was a big part of that. And, yeah, all the other people, <laughs> like Dane, <laughs> he's all right too. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you, what do you think um, from our experience, like, what do you think were some of the biggest things, either from the content or the relationships, that did give you that that transformation? Like, obviously, it was the experience as a whole, but are there any specific things that you can think of? Uh, definitely, definitely the community, just starting to engage with the community. It's a lot different than the sort of people that I normally hang out with, being a lumberjack. <laughs> so, um, it's been a long time since I was at university and stuff, um, like 15 years, 17 years if I'm honest probably. And um, so, yeah, I just sort of forgot what it was like to hang out with, um, yeah, just a different, that type of set. And uh, hanging out with them again and, and them wanting to hang out with me just, yeah, just um, gave me heaps more confidence. And now that community is like... It's like having an army at your back all the time. It's just everything I want to do for business and stuff, they're there, and I wouldn't have had the confidence to ask for help even before, I think. But, um, you know, because you feel a bit lame. But now I just think, oh, I need to know how to do that. I'll ask someone. It's really good. I never get That's tired of hearing your accent ever, 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 ever. But everybody else loves it too. Um, oh, they probably can't understand me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I don't understand you, I'll, I'll ask you to spell a word. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of our biggest struggles in the foundation, because obviously you and I, we're a year later from our foundation experience, and we're, uh, you know, just rolling out with stuff right now, so I guess we could be deemed failures, but... Um, we're not, and we <laughs> think that Speak we are. Speak yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a failure. Um, so let's talk about some of our struggles. How about during the foundation? <clears throat> you want to go first or you want me to? Uh, you can. Mm, what an invitation. Um, a couple things happened. Um, I had an idea and I thought I knew who my market was and so when I went to go call and idea extract and then validate that idea I got stuck because I wasn't talking to the right people and part of the problem was that my solution kind of encompasses um, different departments so my clients currently are some really large corporations which is 
really dang cool, and I'm very excited about that. So if you picture like Fortune 500 companies and you know just picture like loved brands and all that, um, my product resonated with those large corporations, which I totally didn't count on and didn't bank on. But then once I was in there talking with them, I wasn't necessarily talking with the right department. And I got really frustrated. I made over 80 calls, and I kept thinking, what the heck is wrong? Um, and it was really when Dane said, well, make sure you're talking to the right person, that that uh, it triggered me that maybe I wasn't. So that was definitely a sticking point. Second sticking point for me was that I technology, like, forget it. It's just, I, I was just the library <laughs> printing off something because I didn't feel like dealing with my printer that doesn't work, right? So, like, I'm not a technology <laughs> whiz. And when it came to some technology pieces in the foundation, like uh, creating a mock-up of, of the demo of what my product would do, I decided that I could reinvent the wheel and just bypass that part. That was not a good idea. And, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, we like to be a little rebellious sometimes. But when someone presents you with a pattern and a system that works and they've proven that it's worked several times, then it's a really good idea to follow that system. I was, um, I was rebellious and I didn't. And so I totally got stuck because I didn't, I didn't go with the system and I didn't build my demo. And then I was out there talking to these large corporations and they're saying, well, this is really great, but what does it look like? Could we see what it would be like to use it. So that wasn't until this summer that I actually got my act in gear and created that. So I would say that those were two of my biggest struggles and I was at the center of both of them. How about you? How about me? Um, my... Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, totally. Um, the, yes, this is what a techno wizard I am, people. I can't even work for Google <laughs> But um, So I found that that was really hard right through the foundation is that I'm, um, I, yeah, I'm a caveman when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, and at the start that really scared me, but now it doesn't. Not, it, I'm sweet with it now. But um, the biggest challenges for me was probably when it was going on, the foundation, I was... Um, I was working long hours and I'd leave home about half past two or three in the morning and get home about maybe six o'clock if I was lucky in the evening. Um, and so that was pretty hard to work in the content and calling people and stuff like that. I had to leverage time zones and pick pick a different country. So I, I, I worked in Australia for my foundation stuff just so that I could make the calls and yeah I found it really challenging being on the phone to people that I saw as um, superior to me uh, even though with my day job I deal with people in my own industry that are at that level all the time but for some reason I just yeah like Dane said I just <laughs> was a totally different person when it came to anything outside my comfort zone so um, I'd be trembling and that on the phone and I'd be sitting there trying to, you know, <gasps> trying to breathe before I'd get on the phone and, you know, and um, it, it really taught me a lot, it taught me so much because you, you email these people and you, it's so surprising how many of them just say, yeah, I'll talk to you. So all you've got to do is ask right. and they just talk to you and then, and then when you ring them, um, they're really happy to talk to you. Like some people... I learned things like look at the emails that I'd sent and see who had opened it seven times but hadn't replied, you know, and then I would just ring them and that's that's really hard to do that. For, for me it was, it was really difficult just to cold call somebody and I can remember doing that one time and just shaking like really and I was thinking, oh, okay, hang on, I've got to make sure this guy can't hear me really freaking out and then... Um, <laughs> And I rang and he picked up the phone and, and he said, oh, yeah, I've got some notes here. I've been meaning to get back to you, but I just forgot. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, and it was, it was all good like that. It was fantastic. I'm still talking to some of the people just via email and how's it going? And they, you know, asked me for, that's funny because they, they asked me for technological advice, which is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, if only you knew. But, um. <laughs> It's that, that was a real challenge for me, that contacting those people. But 
you can see the other 300 people in the class going through the same struggles and they share with you how they overcame them and it just gives you a bit of motivation when someone else is scared of something and, and, they, and they conquer it and mm -hmm. I was sort of thinking, well, I don't want to be the last one left behind, you know, I'm right. going to do it and, and you can post to the group, yay, I made, you know, some cold calls today and everyone gives you the big high five and... Mm. Yeah, that, and then all of a sudden, so that fear's gone, and now I'm calling all the time, and I just, I really enjoy it. And when I've got, I used to work myself up for the day to have to call somebody, you know, it was just mm. ridiculous. And now I have the list on my phone of who I need to call, and I'm like, oh, I've got a spare five minutes, so I might call that guy, and it's fun, you know? Yeah. It's just totally different. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. You made me think of some other struggles too, like when you're talking about um, <clears throat> time zone and um, just like being being women and feeling like we're managing a lot. I think if anything, that that it was a struggle too. You know, like okay, so here I am. I'm married. I have a household. Okay, you know, and, and so in in one part of my brain, I'm thinking, got to do the grocery list. I uh, got to you know do this errand here. Okay you know, okay, we have to be at this birthday party or whatever it is and just trying to keep all the pieces together. I know that, that I felt that struggle of wanting to chase my goals and dreams and feeling like I needed to swirl plates and keep everything together. And, um, I mean, I think that's just part of being an entrepreneur and I don't think that that goes away. Whether, I mean, it's not even foundation related. It's just are you going to do great things with your life? We'll sort through priorities. But, um Anyways, I, I definitely felt that tension, especially since there was more added on to my plate for that, you know, that time period. And yours, too. I know. I mean, you mentioned you were up super early and up late and um, just working in time zones. And, um, you know, that was just amazing. Incredible what you accomplished. Um, another thing we wanted to cover, how did we get unstuck? Oh, it's Renata's video. Whoa, look at you. Sweet. Before you guys continue, yeah. um, Amy, what was the idea you created, and and how did you find the idea? How did you validate it? How did you pre-sell it? And why did it take twelve months? And before you answer, we have <laughs> four hundred and eighty people listening, so don't screw it up. No, okay. okay. <laughs> and and for those four hundred and eighty listening, if this, if the foundation is new to you by any means, just a quick fifteen second plug. If you're looking to build a software company such like Amy has built, there's an apply button you can apply and we, our doors close December 1st. And we'll get through Amy's story, we'll get through the mindset stuff, and then at the very end, Amy, I've seen some amazing questions in the Q&A that you, cannot, you and I could riff through. With that said, uh, also, if you guys wouldn't mind, if you're enjoying this, share it out on Facebook, because we'll be here for half hour, another hour maybe. And so, if you guys are here, click on the share button, share this around so more people can just see what it's like to build a company from nothing. Go ahead, Amy. I don't remember any of the questions you just asked me, but I'll just tell my story. How about that? That's exactly <laughs> what I asked. Perfect. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I was operating a social enterprise in upstate New York, and it was designed to channel funding to local nonprofits. And while I was in the space, I was connected with a lot of uh, food and beverage, uh, small mom and pops places in my city, and I was also connected with a lot of nonprofits. And they started talking about their issues or their cumbersome process uh, with donation requests. So um, nonprofits use products all the time for their raffles and silent auctions and stuff like that, and they have to ask different food and beverage uh, companies or restaurants for gift certificates and things. And um, the process is very cumbersome. Everyone loves that the transaction takes place. It's super generous and it's fantastic, but it's all manual. So it started on a mom and pops level and I just wanted to make it better for my city. So I got this great idea and I thought, well, they're, they're, I was trying to help my business friends. I said, there must be some kind of little this is my technology self coming out here. My, there must be a little link you could put on your website, and then the nonprofit could go to your website and they could submit their application there, and it would be simple. Well, no, that was not the case. And so I, I immediately said, okay, well, I'll just make one. That's that was 
very aggressive of me. And so then, you know, the story Dean's interview came across. Um, let's see here. So, and I talked about how, um, so, so what has ended up, what I have now, Gively, launching 12 months later, is a, uh, depends on who you are. If you're a person that's all about relationships, I'm going to tell you that I create synergy and strategic partnerships between large corporations and nonprofits. If you're a product person, I'm going to tell you that I've created a donation request management platform that you can see ROI on and um, you can open up new branding and marketing opportunities. So does that answer? Is that clear enough? Do I need to clarify anything else, Dane, you think? Where can people visit, see that site at? Sure. You can go to givily.com, G-I-V-I-L-Y.com. And um, that's... That's my first website you'll see right there. I'm feeling very vulnerable telling you about that, but that's where it is right now. And you just have to be gracious because I'm right, I'm like mid-season, you know, so this is not like a work of art perfected yet. Um, check back with me in like two years and everything might look really sassy and schnazzy, but right now it's it's mid-process. But, um, but I love it for that too. I'm a huge fan of how your site looks. I love your site. And everyone I've shown your site is like, holy crap, this idea is amazing. How did she figure this out? How did she find this idea? So you didn't necessarily really do idea extraction, but you still found pain. Like, can you talk more about how the idea came to be? Um, yes. I would say that I, one, I care about people. And so when I was going about my business, my, that other business, and I was just listening to people talk, they just started talking about what was going on in their business and what was taking up their time. And I heard it from enough people that I just thought, well, I, I automatically think solutions and efficiency and systems and processes and things like that. And um, so that was really where the idea came from, I guess. That was just in my brain. Well, let's create a solution for that. Mm. So you were asking people... What takes up the most time for them, and what else? Um, I wasn't even asking, actually. They were just talking about it. So it was, tis the season. It was, you know, late summer, and back to school things were kind of coming up. So they just were talking. And um, so I think just caring about people and, and being aware of what's going on in their life. And obviously, if, it, if I knew about idea extraction at the time, then I would have had I would have been better equipped to ask more questions and dig in deep. As it was, once I started through the foundation, I went back to those people and had calls and asked more specific questions. So people are asking what the hashtag for this is, and we're up to 500 people now. We're probably going to have to do more of these, Amy and Renata. And so the hashtag for this is pound. Have you seen that SNL skit with uh, where they're like hashtag, hashtag awesome hashtag? Have you seen that SNL skit? No. There's <laughs> it's that. really funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Jimmy Kimmel thing where they're like hashtag awesome hashtag bro hashtag whatever and they're like going like this a hashtag. <laughs> anyway, so hashtag the foundation live and and Amy. Uh, if you, if you guys wanted to share a, if I was to try to condense what you said down into a quote that uh, was able to create Givly, is I think just being present to people's pain is what you were. And you were being present to their words and you were just being present listening. And that's actually how I get my first idea ever, which was the agent care center way back in the day, was just listening to people complain. You know? Yeah. Yeah. When I got my one, because I've got my product coming out in January and that one was the result of a conversation that I would have heard, I don't know, many times over the years and I always just thought, oh, bummer, <laughs> you know, about this problem. <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> and this time I thought, oh, hang on a minute, it just hit me, you know, like my, my mind had finally caught up with your content. It was sort of, there was a bit of a lag. <laughs> and uh, I finally caught up and and so this conversation happened and it just hit me straight away and I said, I just spoke up and I said, I'm your man, I'll build that. And then uh, 
Yeah, and I, and I would have heard that conversation, that same conversation, so many times, and now it's um. Yeah, that 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 products they're going to make it compulsory, and they they're a worldwide company, like Canada, United States, England, Australia, New Zealand. So fingers crossed for that. But yeah, the number of times that you hear opportunities now, eh, Amy, and you think, oh, I could fix that, but before, yeah, you didn't have the confidence to do it, eh? I didn't even know how I was going to do it. I came out of the building and I thought. What am I going to do? And I got straight on the phone to one of my foundation buddies, and I said, "Right, I've just promised this, this, and this. You're going to need to help me because I don't have a clue how to set this up because I'm so non-tech." And that's it. And now we're off and racing. But before, I wouldn't have done it because number one, I wouldn't have been present in the conversation to even think, "Hey, there's an opportunity." And then I wouldn't have. I would have thought, "Oh, I better get all my ducks in a row before I start." Now I just think oh, I'll just cross that bridge when I come to it, and I love it. It's cool. <laughs> it's good. It wake, makes you listen to people heaps more because you're just perking up for an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's interesting too. Like neither of neither of us care cared or care about money, and I say that yeah. we do, but we it was it's never been the first motivation, and I think that that has been the most. It's been really rewarding to care about people and solving their problems and building their trust. And uh, you know, the money will come. The money will totally come. But to have that mindset first has been fantastic because then we we really can listen um, with just like clear vision and clear a clear heart. That's a, like what is a clear heart? I don't even know why I just said that, but yeah, <laughs> well, a clear heart. <laughs> Amy, before, and I imagine, if I imagine being you guys before, when you say listening with a clear heart, you're actually listening without any of the internal chatter about, like, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I don't know what I'm doing. When, yeah. you, step in, when you step into that power and you feel clarity in your body, and you just listen, you're like, wow. And, like, there's no chatter saying you can't do this. There's no chatter saying, oh, no, no, no. Like, your heart's clear because the heart doesn't understand, like, self-worth issues. It confuses the heart. Like, the heart just loves loves to be clear. So when your heart's clear, it allows your mind to be clear. You're actually brain neurons in your heart. So that totally makes sense. Uh, so we're up to over 500 people now. And I don't know, Amy and Renata, are you guys up for, uh, how long are you guys able to stay on for? We're good. We can wrap this out for a while longer. All right, all right. So the more people that like and share this, the longer we will stay on. And I'm having, I'm having, I'm feeling the energy pick up. I'm really loving this. Renata, what was the idea that you ended up stumbling across? Um, it's a safety application for, for um, it's for the logging industry, but it'll, it, it's basically just for trucks. So um, yeah, it's, it's got hardware involved as well, which is, which was really scary. <laughs> but um, but it's all. You just get someone to solve it. It's easy. So um, it's just a it's just a safety thing that um, allows people to be in a safe place while they're getting loaded. How did you come across this pain? Because um, it's the industry that I work in, so I knew the pain was there, and people have been complaining about it for years. Mm. And I've always heard it, and everyone, you know, you hear people saying, "Wouldn't it be good if there was somebody invented or something?" And everyone goes, "Yeah," and then they move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'd love to hear you guys, as, Amy. As you get back into the dialogue that you had started before, um, I'd love to. I'd love to hear you guys talk about Renata. You said something really key, and you said that it took your mindset a while to catch up to the content. Oh yeah, yeah. And and so, uh, transforming into an entrepreneur is. It's just it's it's not it's, it's not overnight, right? It, it, it kind of like it starts in the mind, the idea plants, and then slowly you feel like the DNA of your body change to the point. But some some people are slower, some people are faster. With that with that said, um, if you would like to uh, have your DNA change and you'd like to be in the foundation, there is an apply button on this page. If if you'd like to apply, we do close December first. And I'd I love highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. If you're hovering over that button. Click that button. <laughs> Click it. Do it. Don't, don't hesitate. Just jump in. Do it. Yeah, it's it's quite I, I feel like it's a small price for, for what this new life you could have is. Oh and, totally. 
for it me, really it's like is. The, the radio in my head. It's, it's like I had the radio on in my head for 10 years telling me, oh, you're no good and all this. And now if someone's changed the station, it's just, <laughs> it's wicked. Eh? It's a whole That's new a life. fabulous analogy. I love that. That's really good. Really? I, I have to say, the only purchase I've ever made in my life without, like, a larger purchase without thinking twice was the foundation. Like, if you ask my husband yeah. before this, I was so stingy. Like, I was counting pennies. <gasps> Seriously, I'm terrible. Like, I would not ever stop at Starbucks. I would not, like, I would just deny myself. And then it's, like, the foundation. And I walked into his office, and I was, like, doing this right now. He's like, great. He was so excited. <laughs> he, was, he was excited that I was about to spend money. Yes, let's do it. Anyway, Dave, what did you want to talk was like, is that all? Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wait, but not a, didn't, you, didn't you say that your husband had to not buy his motorcycle or something? Yeah. We got, I, I finally let him have it once the foundation finished this year. But <laughs> Um, the money was earmarked for his motorbike, and I said, I'm sorry, babe, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew I wasn't sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what it would be like to be one of your husbands. Like, you guys definitely rule the house, huh? Well, we, we look and sound like we do anyways, but, you know, <laughs> we talk a really good game. No one's home to argue with us right now. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys do click on that apply button, it opens a new window, so you don't have to be worried about being taken away from the page. But I want to talk with Amy and Renata about the letting your mindset catch up. Because I have a friend here in Des Moines who's been, it's taken about two and a half years for his mind to catch up. And then it takes other people, uh, like the Carl Mattiolas of the world, like a month or two. <laughs> so... What, uh, what would you guys have to say about why, why 12 months instead of six and wrapping that around this whole catching up, your, having your mindset identity catch up to being an entrepreneur and all that? Go away, man. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we are currently right where you are. You are a product of your life up until this moment. And some of you have had really ugly lives, to be perfectly honest. Some of you have had beautiful lives. Some of you have had fantastic childhoods, and some haven't been great. Some of you have had um, jobs handed to you, and others of you have fought for them. And so, wherever you find yourself at this minute, like your your life is loaded with 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 the past, and so that is a blessing and a curse. And so, um, I think when I joined the foundation I had a lot of experience in talking with people and sales and and so that I brought that in as a strength um, but there are definitely some things that held me back and and it wasn't until May when I actually met the people in the foundation and we connected face to face that I felt unleashed that's the best word I could describe it that I felt unleashed for the first time like I felt like the thing that had been holding me back through my entrepreneurial journey was this fear that if I was successful I would be lonely that there wouldn't be anyone there that could support me or encourage me and I would just be great on the beaches of the world with a lot of money and no friends and then when I met these people that I knew would be there for me I just felt like I could be on a tear um, but kind of going back to my earlier point I brought in some great experiences and I brought in some some things that I was fearful of and, and having to work through those. Um, you know, it wasn't like I just started the foundation day one and said, well, I'm going to work on myself and I'm going to, you know, get over this stuff. I, that's not how it was. I wasn't, because I was in business mode. I was focused on building a business and it wasn't until three quarters of the way through the foundation that I realized, oh, I am my business. And that's a really, really important point. I want you to hear that. Like, you are your business. And the best business that you can be in is something that you have skills in and that you're passionate about because you will come out in your business. Your brand, the brand of your business is pretty much your personal brand. And um, I'm rambling now, so I'll take it away, Renata. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Hold on. Before you do, 
So before you do, a couple kind of nuggets in there. First, I want to address how we're going to do Q&A. I'm not really sure. So <laughs> let, let me make up something right now. Um, we, have some, we have some really good questions, and uh, I will stay until questions have been answered up to 10 p.m. Central Time. And, and so I'd say about 9.15-ish, about a half hour, let's do a soft stop. And, and then have you guys, I'm just going to field questions from the community straight to you. But I, okay. don't, I don't think we're ready for questions yet because I want more, I want people to understand the content of, your, of both of your guys' character. And what you said, Amy, was things got real for you when you met everybody in May. Yeah, yeah. What, can you say more about that? What is that? Like, that's six months. So, I mean, you, you delayed on building your user interface for a really long time. Yeah. And, and Carl told me that once, you, once he worked with you and helped you build your UI, that's when things switched for you. And also um, when you met people at, at the foundation at the end of six months. So can you talk just a little bit more about what you were afraid of and uh, going back, what you would have done sooner? And also answer the question about why this, why meeting people made it real for you when you became unleashed, as you say. Yeah, um, I didn't realize what I had my hands on in the foundation. So I was connected with people, I was messaging here and there, but there was still this idea that because I was an entrepreneur and I had been a solo entrepreneur and I didn't really interact with a lot of people, that I brought that person into the foundation. And although I had some touch points with people in the foundation and Renata and I had connected and we were helping each other here and there but but we didn't even realize our own skills that we had to offer each other really so so it was kind of a self-discovery process of realizing what what I had to offer the community and then for that to happen in return so when I got to meet everyone in May and look and talk with them and, and it was just real. It was like this realness that, yeah, we're not in competition. We never really were. And we're actually on the same path and we're building these businesses and, oh, you're really good at copywriting. Oh, and you're really good at knowing things about SEO and SEM. And you're really good at coming up with names for, for businesses. And you're really good at thinking strategically and I'm really good at this piece and, and you've read hundreds of books from you know incredible authors and what are we all doing with this so now now I know that when XYZ problem is happening I know exactly who to call and and who to connect with to fix that problem it's not just this blanket hey I'm not throwing up some help signal and, and hoping that someone will answer because I know exactly who to talk to um, so that's kind of why I started to feel unleashed. Um, oh, and I, I'm embarrassed to say, I mean, it's fine. It's the Ghibli story, and it's worked out. It's perfect timing now. I can say that. But I, I really just I dragged my feet, and I, I had never really talked to Carl. Um, and we met in May. Um, and for those of you that don't know, carlmadiola.com will, will get you to his site and you can read some of his great blog posts. But um, he created an incredible business called uh, Clinic Metrics. And, um, and so I called and talked with him for the first time ever in August. And on that call, he said, so how are things going with Ghibli? And I said, they're all right. I'm, you know trying to connect, do pre-sales and stuff. And he said, well, do you have a demo that you're walking them through? And I said, no. <laughs> and you have to understand, I, I love to tell this story because Carl is, he wants everybody to win, and he is really sweet, but he doesn't, like, he doesn't like mediocrity. And I'm great with that. And he wouldn't let me be okay with mediocrity, too. And he said, you need to have a demo. I said, Carl, I can't do that. He said, well, you need to figure out how. I'll help you, but you need to figure out how. So together we made this, this demo. Um, he showed me how to do it, and I didn't want to disappoint him. So I created my first <laughs> iteration in two hours. I was so nervous to, like, disappoint Carl. So, um, And then that was really the big difference. That I took that demo then to, to those clients, those potential clients that were, I had the relationship there, I'd made the connections, they just wanted to see what Givley would look like. And I took that, and we were in. We were ready to go. So, but that was August. That was just a couple of months ago. 
Like that oh, could have yeah. happened back in February. Are you kidding me? Anyways. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, so do you feel like you know? Do you feel like a quote failure at all? Do you, I mean, how do you feel right now? Being being a year instead of six months, like is that how do you, how does that make you feel? I do not feel like a failure. No, I re I felt like a failure in May, in the sense like I knew when I saw everyone in May, I expected more of myself and I could have done better. I could have done better. But it was one of those, okay, well then let's just change what we didn't do well the first six months. Because, okay, so, so I'm six months late on my goals and dreams. Like, come on, people. If I've waited this long, what's another six months? So, so no, I don't feel like a failure at all. I feel honestly like Givli is right on time. Givli is right on time because, like, like we talked about that lag time between the mindset and actually the results. I feel like I'm I'm right in stride with everything now. I was not the person that could even handle the business six months ago. So I'm ready now. I'm great. I don't feel like a failure at all. And. For those who do the foundation and can rock out of business in six months, that's super. I think it should take everybody a year. But I mean, you know, just I think we should be gracious enough to let it to let ourselves allow ourselves to have a year to develop as a person because it's not just like we talked about. It's not it's not just building a business. It's building yourself and your yeah. business. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is she pulling on your heartstrings right now, Renata? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I'm just yeah, happy listening to that. I can relate to a lot of that story. Yeah. You got totally. me. You definitely got me. Um, so uh, a couple things to to like just to recap, make sure I really got what you said, Amy. So things clicked for you and you felt unleashed six months in because you were able to recognize the value that you had to offer where initially you're like, ah, what, what do I have to offer? Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the second thing is you recognize the value that everyone else has to offer, which made you rest more into what you had to offer. Mm -hmm. and, and then the, the other big thing was um, meeting Carl and talking to Carl on the phone and not letting Carl let you rest in mediocrity. Mm -hmm. So I love him for that. I love him for that. I love him for that. And mm -hmm. that's why Carl is the lead how to build a product guru in the foundation this year. Carl is so much better at building products than me. Carl designed teslamotors.com. Carl created the user interface in the Tesla vehicles. And <laughs> like He's a genius, and that's why, if, so if you want access to Carl, if you want to be on group Q&As with Carl, mentored and coached by Carl, he'll be inside the foundation, and he'll be under phase two building the product. And, you know, Amy, but everything that you said, I think almost centered in the community, like this this underpinned, like the six-month-end the six community, Carl, community, like all community. And the community is where... You, you know, you, you think that confidence comes from believing in yourself. But if that's the case, then you would be confident when you're just all by yourself. But the truth is that confidence comes from a community of people who believe in you. So if you just surround yourself with, with people who believe in you deeply, then you'll have the confidence that you need. And if you don't have that community of people who deeply believe in who you are as a person, and you're not confident, that's, that's a hint to why. So if you're yearning for that kind of confidence and that kind of community, I highly encourage you to click on that apply button because the foundation launches once a year and December 1st will be closed and you'll have to wait another year. With that said, Renata, how was the, uh, how do you, like, you know, Amy, when I asked do you feel like a failure, I even hated asking the question because I know you're not. And I know. I can feel it. I can feel that you hated that. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you were so rude to ask that. <laughs> I know, I was like hiding over here. I was like, do you feel like a, a failure? Because <laughs> no, you're not. Like the second you join a found the foundation, I consider you a success because you just did something that 
hardly anyone else on the planet does. How many people join the foundation or put money down to invest in themselves to make a change for their life to do something real? And then how many people sit on the stance, sit in the sidelines and just talk about it? You no, know, the second you try and buy and join any program, whether it's Tony Robbins or or some some other program or the foundation or any other product that can improve your life, the second you do that, you're already in the five percent category of winner. And if it doesn't work out for you, just get a refund or move on. But I, I just I just think that in the second that you join your success, which is why I don't even consider the fact the fact that if you come out of this foundation without a software company, at the end of six months, let's say you come out of the foundation, you're like, you know what, I want to start e-commerce. And so yeah, go ahead, Amy. So uh, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start an e-commerce business, and you decide you don't want to build software, then are you a failure? No. Or let's say you come out of the foundation in these six months, you're like, you know, I don't want to build a software company, but you're like Renata, who's gonna build one in January, but you've been selling custom websites and you're now going to travel the world, do you consider yourself a failure? No. Either way, if you join the foundation, you're going to come out knowing more about who you are. And like all the greatest seekers and sages in life have all said, the game of life is not to master something else, but to master yourself. And anything that can help you uncover more of who you are, man, we're not a, I don't know about you, but I think the foundation just shines a giant spotlight on everything you don't like about yourself and everything that you're afraid of and allow you to like then face it because as an entrepreneur it's the only place that I've seen where you can stand in front of a mirror and you can't hide behind anything as an employee or as anything not an entrepreneur you get to hide you get to hide behind all your limiting beliefs you get to hide behind all your fears and that's a very that's a timid life that's a, that's a limited life so anyway Renata I, I acknowledge you for standing in front of a mirror shining the giant spotlights on the things that terrify you and I kind of love for you to tell the story of the first phone call that we had and how you listened to that that recording over and over again to hammer in this new identity and and then also talk about what it is that happened for you uh, that, that for why it maybe took quote longer than than we say it should. And I, I'm actually starting to kind of resent the whole six month thing because I think it puts a it, it puts, a, um, puts an undue pressure on people. It's kind of a good pressure. But I don't like the fact that Amy, you had to graduate in six months and, and not feel, uh, not feel totally successful. Then, uh, even though you feel successful now, uh, I'm having some internal conflicts at the moment with that. But anyway, Renata, <laughs> share your share your story. Just to what you just said there about the six month thing, and when we met in May, like we we got so <clears throat> the community stayed together and we're growing stronger even after that six months. Because what's funny is even people like Carl, like back in Vegas, he didn't even realize how cool he was. Eh? He'd be like, who, me? <laughs> and all these people that have got so much stuff to teach other people, and now they're all coaching and doing all this stuff. At the time, they were like, oh, don't you know how to do that? You know, they just, they didn't even realize how much they had to offer, you know? So all of that really, really evolved, the, you know, they didn't really, nobody knows what they've got to offer. Even even me, like I was able to even offer things and I thought I didn't have anything to offer, you know. But um so that was pretty cool. But um yeah, my first phone call with Dane. What's that? Oh, I just want to interject before before you go too far. I wanna address one of his internal conflict things. I have a thought on it. But go ahead, finish your thing. <laughs> go, no go. <laughs> okay, so my thought is no. I actually was really drawn to the six month thing because I'm terribly impatient. So as an entrepreneur, it was like I needed an answer yeah. and I loved that it was six months. All I thought was super fast track to the answer. So so I think that having six months is great and maybe just the expectation for personally that I should have just said, okay, it might take me a year, but but it was okay to have the goal for it to be six months. So yeah, just a thought. Okay. <laughs> um, so the first time I, um, I've never used any Google Calendar or Gmail or I just use native apps on my computer. So, uh, so here when we got into the foundation, everyone's using Google Docs and Google Calendar and Dane had this booking calendar where you could book a one-on-one -on -one with him and um, <clears throat> so I was just trying it out in the first couple of days. And I was just clicking to see what happens, you know. <laughs> and, um, and the next minute I had this, I thought, oh, look at this, must be one of those things that you book yourself. 
and now I know about them, but back then I didn't know about them, I thought, oh wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and so then I had this appointment booked with Dane that I didn't want, because I'd only just started a couple of days beforehand, and I didn't have anything to talk to him about. And uh, and I couldn't back out of it. Dion, who was just the backbone of the whole thing, he wouldn't let me back out. He was like, no, because it'll make you take action. So I had to go through with this call with Dane. And um, all of my all of the calls I did with Dane and other people, like because I'm out in the forest, I was having to do all this crazy stuff to get on the phone, like, go up to the top of a hill, and you know make sure I had reception and stuff like that. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and there's things like one-way systems and there'd be loaded trucks coming the other way and I'd be calling them on the radio because I had this appointment time, you know, everyone pull over, I've got to get up to the top of that hill, I've got five minutes, you know, and everyone would get out of the way and I'd drive up <laughs> and stuff like it was really important to get there. And then, um, and yeah, when I talked to Dane, it was just, um, he's really calming and stuff and he did some uh, breathing with me and because I was sort of, I was a bit freaked out once I got into the whole foundation because I was just like Amy. I thought, okay, six months and it'll just be A, B, C, D. Just follow the steps. It'll be like putting Lego together and I'll have a business. That's what I thought. <laughs> um, I suppose it is if you're a bit further ahead than me in mindset. But um, so then, So then it was kind of freaking me out how scared I was getting about things. And so I talked to Dane about that and I was wondering... What should I do about being a lumberjack? Should I just uh, gloss over that part and just lie and say I'm a software entrepreneur when I'm talking to people on the phone and stuff? And he was like, no, just go for it. And um, he really, just hearing him sort of laugh and um, think it was hard case that I know how to use a chainsaw and stuff, you know, like it, he thought that was funny and... Yeah, it, it made off. me copy W in case you didn't catch that, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> yeah, you guys have all got an accent, not me. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so that really, Dane was quite accepting of it, and it, yeah, so I listened to that call every day for I don't know how long, a, a, a long time, weeks, probably a couple of months. I listened to it every day, like, and you thought Amy was a stalker. With your cell phone number. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't have your cell phone number. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just listened to that all the time, like more than once a day, because I was really obsessed with the foundation. And if I wasn't listening to my own call, I was listening to all the recorded ones from someone else, like all day. And um, it really, really helped me. I think without without knowing that other people were having the same kind of struggles, I probably would have bailed out. I wouldn't have made it. But um. Yeah, so that, that helped me so much. Dane helped me so much, yeah, just with um, just the acceptance, I think, hey, Dane? Like, you're just really accepting of whatever. Yeah, I, know. I think that was, and I and I was convinced that I was the most lowbrow one in there, and I probably was, but, you know, just, the, <laughs> just I thought I was just the, you know, the stupid one and stuff, and I don't feel like that at all now, but. Yeah, so that really, really helped me. And the six-month thing, I don't care about the six-month thing. For me, like, um, I had such a blast. I, I don't care how long it takes. I don't care that it's still going on. I think the journey for me will just keep going on. Like, I'll probably still be coming up with businesses all the time. I think about things all the time. People say things and, oh, this week, this is major. So this week, this is how different I am now. Like... But even how you said, do you want to do this hangout, <clears throat> that took me about two minutes to reply. I just said, yep, sweet, I'm in. And before I would have really freaked out. Now I'm not, I don't even, I'm not nervous. And I was at a committee meeting for something the other day and one of the guys said, oh, we really need to sort this um, thing out with our system. And I said, I'll, I'll do that. I can sort that out for you. And then, and I made out, I was doing a bit of maths in my head. I said, that'll be, uh, ooh, yeah, that, that should work. It'll be about twelve hundred dollars, <laughs> and they went sweet. <laughs> and it's probably going to take me about. I won't do it. I'll get someone else to do it. But it'll, it'll take me about um, maybe an hour of my time and four or five hours of someone else's time. And I just asked for the money, and they said yes. And then, uh, and then another thing last week, I said to a guy, 
have I got a deal for you? Do you want to give me $3,000 for this other product? You know, And I would never have asked that before. And I truly don't care whether they say yes or no. And before, I was just absolutely paralyzed with worrying about it, you know? So it took a long time for my mind to catch up to that, and now going ahead, my journey's just going to carry on. The six months is sort of irrelevant. That's just the time frame for presenting the content, I sort of feel like. You can so do what you want. Like, mm. It's almost like the mindset changes from a scarcity mentality to an abundance mentality in a lot of, totally. um, like, so many different levels. Mm. Let's, let's jump into let's jump into some Q&A, because uh, I, I want people to get fired off uh, fire off questions to you guys because I think that's where you guys can really shine. And so before we do <laughs> another call to action, if you will, uh, if you would please uh, share and like this this hangout. This is the first time we've ever done this. And if if we get enough shares, if we get enough likes, if we get enough interest, if you guys want to write in and tell us you love this or you want to give us feedback on how to make the next one better, I'm thinking about doing these things sort of once a week or once every two weeks with it with just a foundation member, a foundation alum, and just hanging out and kicking it like this. Because I just, I love the energy. This is brave. This brings me so much joy to be hanging out with you two. And Dane, so, said that, Dane said if he gets 500 likes, he'll take his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there 500 likes? Five, hold on, let me check. Let me see is, this, is this legal? Can I do this? There are 240, okay. 247, 247 likes. I don't think we're going to get to 500 likes. It, <laughs> if we do, if we do, I will maybe consider taking my shirt off only for you, Renata. Uh, <laughs> so, with that said, if you guys want to be involved in this kind of energy, this kind of community, and you want to build a business, and you want to do it and have fun, like Renata said, and just have a blast and enjoy the journey, and not put so much pressure on yourself all the time, but just lighten up and enjoy the process, click on that Apply Now button. We launch once a year. We'd hate, to miss, we'd hate to miss you this year, and we close December 1st. With that in mind, Amy, did you, or Renata, did you guys have, uh, did you guys look through the questions, and did you guys have any ones earmarked that you definitely wanted to answer? Um, looked through the questions briefly, did not have any specifically earmarked. Okay. Um, I noticed the one that said that can you do it with a 9 to 5 job, and you definitely can. Like, I did it with a really tight pack schedule, and and I did it. Uh, you just you feel like you're going slower than everyone else, but if you just do the if you just do the one mile a day, it averages out, you know, and you you come out on top. Can you say more about that right now? That's pretty simple. Like, what do you mean? Like, instead of going, okay, you know, you just got to make, you just got to take some action every day. Even though you've got a packed schedule, just take some action every day. You can definitely do it when you've got a job and kids and, and all that kind of stuff. You've definitely got time. It's not a, it's a, yeah, it's not a problem. I, I'm coaching a girl at the moment that um, she works really long hours as well, and I've just got her doing, she gets up an hour earlier, and she spends one hour each morning doing stuff for her. Thing. And it, it's just not a problem. You just make progress. So that was one question that really struck me. That, um, that yeah, I'm an example of that. You can still do it. Dane, I, I do have something that I, before we hit all these questions. I think it's kind of an overarching answer to to questions that people ask, or maybe it's questions that they're not asking externally, but they are asking internally. Um, and I know that a lot of you, I'm not sure if a lot of you on this call, but I know that a lot of people have reached out and one of the questions that they asked is like, is, is it worth it? And I don't think that's the question, that's an easy question to ask, but I don't really think that's the one that, I don't think it's the one you mean. And by that, I'm, I think that what, what we're asking when we ask that question is, can I do it? Can I make it to the foundation? Can I be successful? And I don't know you. Dane doesn't know you. Renata doesn't know you. And the foundation is great. And it will provide a ton of content. And it will provide answers. And it will provide a system. 
Um, but I think the question that you really have to ask yourself is can will you commit to it and will you do it? Because probably if I go through every single question here, and there's over 300 questions, we've got tons of questions, but but every one of them can be answered if you're committed. That's the bottom line. Whether it's time, whether it's money, whether it's industry related, that's all, that's all irrelevant. And that's hard. That's hard to swallow. But if you commit to your dreams, then the how doesn't so much matter. And one of my closest friends reminds me of that often. You know, when I'm thinking about my dream and I'm picturing that, I start to trip up when it's, well, how am I going to get there? And he says, stop asking how. Stop. Just stop. So I guess that would be the first question. My question to you is, are you committed to your dream? Because if you are, and the foundation contains something that will move you toward that, then apply. Like, just apply. Because if it gets you close to your goals and dreams, then great. That's what you want, right? So is it going to take care and satisfy 100%? Well, no, but what is? Okay, so now we can address questions. Well, I think, well, I think we're done. Let's close the Hangout. <laughs> so, actually, I really like, thank you, Amy. Uh, I really like David Swift's question here, and, you know, I like a lot of your questions, uh, but I hear a lot of people taking, telling me to answer David's. So, uh, David's asking, uh, with last year's class, what was the success rate? Well, uh, at the end of the program, we had 41 students out of 336 the paying customer, which is roughly 13%. But our success rate is going to go up over time because, as you see, you know, Amy is at about 12 months in, and I don't think she was, she was included in those totals. Renata, I'm not sure if she was included in those totals. Do you guys do you guys know? No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have been in there. I, 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 I wasn't because when the survey was done, I wasn't. Right. Yep. So at the end of six months, David, wow, that's incredible to me. At the end of six months, we had 13% success rate, which is phenomenal to me. Now, the other 87%, uh, I believe some of it could be the fault of the foundation, but I really believe the majority of it is with uh, our inability to help people step into like who they are and have the qualities and characteristics of a successful person. Now, I'm not saying that the 87% of the people that didn't succeed are not unsuccessful people. I'm, I'm saying there's there's a two-edged horn, and that's the that's it, the, the mystery of the foundation that I'm most excited to solve. Because uh, when you join, when, when you have a program like this, if you have 100 people that join, mm -hmm. 10 of them are almost always, 5 to 10 of them are going to be successful no matter what. Just like if you imagine 100 people buying a weight loss program or 100 people going to the gym for the new year, you're going to have a small percentage left at the end. Is that the gym's fault or is that the person's commitment? So we actually, we actually did a lot of research on, on the 41 people that were successful, and we found 10 behavior qualities and 13 uh, characteristics, uh, personality characteristics of the successful high achievers inside the foundation. And we're going to be releasing those, David, over the next week or two. They're beautiful infographics. They're really well done, and I, ho I hope you really enjoy them. Um, but I actually, before that, I'm curious, Renata and Amy, what are some of the common characteristics of those succeeded? Those who succeeded in your like in your opinions. Well, I'd just like to say that in our time zone, we had um, we had a number of people in our time zone team that were joined up and they never showed from day one. They just never ever showed, not one time. Never don't know who they are. Couldn't. And there was a big so there was a lot of people that were in the numbers, but they just they never actually turned up from just day one. They just kind of. I think it, that's definitely down to them, not the foundation, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sorry, Amy, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, that, that ties in with what I was going to say too. So I, I'm not sure how things are totally structured this year, but last year we were, uh, we were all in a team, smaller teams, and um, my team is still meeting, and the people that stuck with it decided to show up week after week are successful and that doesn't mean that they necessarily have launched their their SaaS product yet that doesn't mean that they haven't pivoted and done something different but they're all still showing up and they're all successful they're not failures and I think a key characteristic was getting over it's hard to show up when you have a bad week 
And when you feel bad about yourself and you feel like, oh, I didn't do the action that I should have, I didn't reach the goal, I, I mean, we have a laundry list. How many weeks do we actually feel like we rock it out? Okay, let's just be honest. So showing up when you don't feel worthy of showing up is going to ensure your success a lot more than because if you just hang on, just hang on to the successful people, hang on to the people that are around you struggling to do the same thing, you're going to make it. You will. Promise. Totally will. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Our team's still really strong as well, eh, Amy? We're at my time zone team. Amy's an honorary. She's she's coming to our meetup in the middle of the year. Um, but um, our time, my time zone team is all, um, the, we've still got, Quite a few active members, like, and we, yeah, we meet really. We were meeting once a week, but we've had people of people have launched and been successful, and now they're traveling the world and stuff. So it's not as easy to make times to meet, but we were meeting once a week all the time. So now it's just a couple of times a month, but um, we're really serious about it, and we still meet. And all of those people have been successful, and yeah, they're generating money with the foundation. Mindset, one way or another. So you, another yeah. characteristics I think um, teachable. So there's a really delicate balance between being teachable and having confidence, um, and a lot of that is rooted in learning who, like who we are and what our abilities are, so that we can have that confidence. But then also knowing that I'm really terrible at some things, and being completely fine to laugh about that, and to call on those who are great at it. So. So teachable and and confident. I'd say helpful as well, because I notice the people that are successful are always the really helpful people. That's that's how they they put a lot out, and mm. so they get a hell of a lot back. And it's not done with any sort of agenda or strategy. They're just um, helpful, and so everyone helps them. And that's that's one thing I'd say about all the people that have made it. They're just so helpful. Mm -hmm. They show up. They're teachable. They're helpful. And you know, teachable means that you know they kind of they're all underlying self worth issues. You know, are you worthy to show up? Are you worthy to be teachable? Do you have anything valuable to help someone? Yeah. We're at 290 shares, so the shirt is about... Stand on. Stand on. I should have said 300, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have checked. So I know there's, there's probably a lot of people on this Hangout that have already bought the foundation, and I hope that, I hope that those of you that are on that bought the foundation, you're just getting reaffirmed why you're here. And for those of you that are considering whether or not you still want to purchase the foundation, you still have some time to think it over. It's the 21st. You got about you got about 10 days left to really decide if you want to jump into the foundation. And we'll continue to do hangouts like this. We'll continue to do Q and A's. Ultimately, we want you to have the information that you need to to make a decision. And if I may just bust off on a quick tangent and then get back to David's questions in my in my bedroom here, you'll see I have a four foot by eight foot uh, piece of artwork. And this is based on my favorite book of all time, Power Versus Force. And so I, had, I hired a designer to take my favorite book and turn it into a piece of art. And I think if you can see, you can't see the words necessarily, but all the words on the left give you power, and all the words on the right drain you or give you force, if you will. So it's power versus force. So I look at this not nearly as often as I should. But if you see here, um, this says giving, being giving gives you power, and then of course taking gives you force, and then being gifted gives you power, and being lucky gives you force, being gentle gives you power, being rough gives you force. So if you're imagining doing your cold calls, the gentle approach on cold calls is so much better than trying to like boss and push through. And you can be gentle and still direct, but what I wanted to talk about is the difference between being educating and being persuading. I don't want at any time or any point for any of you here to feel like I'm persuading you into the foundation. Uh, I want you to feel like you're getting educated on all the facts so you can make a decision on yourself, a uh, decision for yourself. But just, to, just notice the difference of like how it feels for you to feel educated about something and then for how it feels to be persuaded. 
And then notice that how how you could use this, uh, and you guys, you guys wouldn't believe this. I've actually got another one full of a bunch of different words on the other wall. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just one or one over here. Um, you can't see it, but the word is to, to get be inviting. To be inviting to someone gives you power, and to be urging to someone does not. So imagine your your family for Christmas. They're like, oh, why don't you ever want to go? Like, why don't you ever want to come see me for Christmas? You never see me. Da, 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 that's urging. Versus the mom or parent that's like, oh, if you can make it for Christmas, we'd love to have you. Um, so these these states of being actually can completely transform. So anyway, the state of being I'm I'm committing to with you guys right now is is educating you. And right now, inside the foundation, the mindset module is available immediately. And Amy and Renata, uh, you guys would be blown away at the difference in experience this year. You guys had to put up with a lot last year. <laughs> And so, if you uh, so, I want to answer more questions about people that are maybe on the fence of, of buying or not. And the the next question is, ooh, what are some of the common characteristics of those who failed by quitting or underperforming? That's a great question. <clears throat> scarcity. They've just got a real scarcity mindset. I would say they're entitled. Yeah, they just got. They feel like you know how there's people that have got an internal locus of control and the external locus of control. Those people have got. I feel like they've got external. Like they think that things happen to them, and they mm -hmm. believe in luck and all that. And um, that's not. I I don't feel that way. Yeah, like that victim mentality. I call it victim yeah. mentality. What you said is so much nicer sounding, but. <laughs> Like, I'm a slight major. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's definitely a big thing. You can hear them, they say, oh, but um, we shouldn't have to pay for that, or, um, yeah, or you owe me for that, or just that type of thing that sort of, they're always just really wrapped up in that type of thing instead of the giving, yeah. And so they don't get it back. That scarcity thing just stands out so much to me. Totally. Um, one that comes to mind for me is, um, I'm not going to make you raise your hands because I can't see them anyways, but for all of my planning peeps out there who love order and just <laughs> the perfect journey, I'm with you. I'm with you. I love it too. Um, but... If we call ourselves an entrepreneur, we kind of forfeit that. That is part of the 9 to 5 world, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if that's what you want, then <laughs> the 9 to 5 is where you should go for uh, order and plan. But um, the entrepreneurial journey has got a lot of curves and hills and pivots, and I would say that people weren't successful who decided it should be a straight road. And those who could shuck and dive a little bit more and um, just be flexible, then they were definitely more successful. Yeah, because there will be some wing in it. <laughs> you can be like, open to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Winging it. Well done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amy, um, how, much, how much did you collect in pre sales for your product? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so when I finally got around to making my demo, um, I collected in the process actually right now. So that's why I'm not being specific about my clients because I'm respecting them, protecting them. But uh, yes, twenty eight thousand is is the pre sale dollar amount. So um, pretty cool. Kind of excited about that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I want to throw I that result. Yes, you don't. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to use that money for your product, Amy. We can just spend it on. Okay. <laughs> just, just rent an island or something for the week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to give Lee? Oh, sorry. We 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 don't. Have <laughs> <laughs> so I, wanted, I wanted to mention the end result that Amy had because 
you know, I don't know if there are any men on here who are wishing we get to the point more, or if there's anyone that are like, okay, this is all great, but what are the actual tangible end results? Well, uh, the end results are kind of secondary. They're, they're, they're very important, but they're really not uh, in, in, in an essence. Like, you, you want them, but when you release your attachment to them, then they come to you in the form of $28,000 in pre-sales. Yeah, uh, they're inevitable. I feel like they're inevitable if you yeah. do what you just said. Yeah. Mm. What do you inevitable? What do you mean? The result, like the the result of having of generating money and having a software company or something like that. It's just inevitable. I can't see how with the quality of what you're providing and stuff. I just can't see how it's not inevitable if you're into it. <laughs> Next question is here. Sorry. No, no, go. So the next question is, what's the involvement in terms of hours or weeks from mentors, founders, etc.? Uh, David, you should expect at least three group Q&A calls a month, at the least. And then I'll be roaming the community personally, just helping people here and there. Um, and, you know, I'll be scheduling, you know, surprise one-on-ones with people every now and again. Again, I get my juice from talking to people and working with them, working with them one-on-one -on -one like I did with Renata. And so no guarantees that you'll work with me uh, personally one-on-one, -on -one, but I will be involved heavily in the community, uh, roaming that thing and, and helping out and supporting as I can. Um, and then we also have 10 coaches in there that are compensated to be in there uh, helping and giving one-on-ones with people and things like that. Uh, so the next is, who do we communicate with directly during the six months? Do we have an assigned group, a chosen coach, or mentor? Well, that'll change, David. What we're doing this year is, um, I think how we're going to do it this year, is we're organizing people by level. So you'll be leveled up in the system, and you'll be talking with other people who are similar to your level. So the group that you talk to is going to change as you become more successful. And and then depending on the phase you're in, whether it's pre-selling or building the product or sketching the solution or, uh, or idea extraction, you'll be hanging out with the mentor who's the expert at that during that phase. Um, so it's, I think it's, it's going to be beautifully done. And Renata's just saying great system, which it is. And then uh, is communication with the community through software? Yes. We have a state-of-the-art discussion forum that's like the newest generation. It's built off of something called Discourse, and it's going to be inside that platform. And those are those questions from David. David, I hope they helped answer. Um, I've got a yeah. question I'd like to answer that's on our doc here. Is that cool if yeah. I answer Take it that? Away. Take Sweet. It away. So a really cool question came in. Um, how do you think someone who is not a hip 20 to 40 year old would do in this group? Would they be welcomed or would they be looked at as too old for this? And I want to tell you that um, at least for the last class of the foundation, we are the quirkiest, most um, random group of people I have ever been part of. And we are all ages. We're all over the world. We're all different interests. We look completely different and we love each other so um, I, I mean I guess if I'm honest there's probably some who are hip some who are not hip some who are nerdy some who are sporty some who are I mean we're not another like we're not techie at all there's definitely techie people um, so all are welcome and you will find yourself with your own giveaway class giveaway class well, you can tell how much I love what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> <You're so laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we have Leanne. Leanne's in her fifties, isn't she? And she no, doesn't look it, but I think she's in her fifties. <laughs> she well, just fits right in. Leon, Leanne just fits right in, and she's in her fifties. And there's, um, yeah, it's just not age. Just doesn't matter. It's not a not a bother. Yeah. Do you have goals and dreams you want to chase? Okay, good. Join, join us then. Yeah. So I mean, like you know, Amy. All due respect, you're in your mid third, or not? Your 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 age is undisclosed. <laughs> <laughs> and Man, you're on fire. <laughs> 
And you know, from from an outside perspective, you are incredibly attractive. And so, for you to say something like, "Oh yeah, we're all this weird misfits," and like, to to to, I just there's a part of me that doesn't really believe you because we all can't be high achievers, intelligent, smart, attractive, precise with our words as you. So it's hard it's hard for me to believe if I'm just listening to you. What do you say to that? I say that's a really good question, Dane Maxwell. I say look at our group photo. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's like a cartoon. All the different demographics. <laughs> you, know? you couldn't make that up if you tried. It's it totally awesome. is. I love it. Yeah. We're all different types, eh? We really are. And, you know, I mean, I think everyone has insecurities. doesn't matter who you are. You could be the most, I mean, we look at celebrities, they all have insecurities too. And so um, I guess just realizing that we're people and we have those insecurities then um, and, and, and we have weaknesses and we have ugly parts of us. And, and being honest about that, I'm not perfect at all. Um, and she's some of her really yeah, she's really, I was going to say, some of my closest friends know, you know. Um, I have I have ugly days, and um, so I may be articulate every once in a while, but, um, you know, I have bad days, too. And, and seeing that different, it's not about external stuff. Like, really, when we get down to it, that's not why we connect with people. And, and to the 500-some people on this call, like, think about who your closest friends And they may or may not be articulate. It's because we we've bonded on a deeper level, and um, that's one of the things that I love about the people in the foundation that they that that we've locked in with the deepest parts of ourselves, and we pull from each other's strengths, and and there's a an ability because we accept each other as we are. There's an ability to be vulnerable in a way that I've never experienced before. Um, that I can be real, I can be honest, and I can literally come and say, I'm broken today. And I'm just, I feel I'm doubting myself, and I feel overwhelmed. And that idea is welcomed. And it's not a disappointment. Someone doesn't look at me and say, well, you look like you have it all together, so you should have it all together. That's not what happens. Um, so I hope you believe me now that we're just a quirky bunch of misfits. And I think the older people, the older people have got so much to offer because, yeah. like, I I am one because I'm I was really worried about being the oldest. <laughs> um, but I wasn't the oldest, but I'm pretty close. Uh, but I was really worried about being the oldest, and um, man, those young ones they really need you because <laughs> they don't have the life experience and stuff, and you know, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so they they really need that other perspective, yeah. We, we all need each other. I mean, we're so many, we're, we're different personalities. And when you when you understand yourself, then it can help you value other people because I, I definitely don't have everything that I need to get through this life. But because I surround myself with other people that, you know, some people are so much better. I mean, we have some of the sweetest people that, that we know. I'm not sweet. I'm thoughtful, but I'm not sweet at all. And so I love to talk with them. We have supportive <laughs> she people. She really isn't. I'm really. I'm also. She sends me an email sometimes. She'll be like, "Should I send this email or is this too harsh?" And I have to go, "Mayday, pull up! Do not send that email." <laughs> we need each yeah, other. It's coming from me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we need each other. So. Um, but, um, I'm hanging we... out with all sorts of different people now. I wouldn't want to hang out with a bunch of people that are exactly the same as me. I like. I'm hanging out with some of the biggest squares that I've ever hung out with, and I'm just loving it. It's awesome. All sorts of different people, you know, and um, it's really good. It really adds to the whole thing. It's boring hanging out with people just like yourself. Yeah. Daniel, can you pull that, that photo up while we uh, get to more questions? And then, Amy, if you want to be skimming that document for me, and any any questions that's, that you feel a ping in your body, and we'll answer those. Not the ones that are like, meh, but like the ones where you, poof, you feel that. Ping, and also with you or not as well, any questions you really feel a resonance in your body with? Scott, tell me. I noticed lots of... 
I saw lots of questions about ideas. There's lots of people going, but how do I get my idea and stuff like that? And it's just, um, <clears throat> I can understand that hesitation before you get in and start the content. I, I really can. I can understand that because I, I couldn't see how it was going to work, but I just thought, okay, well, I'm, I watched a few of Dane's videos and I thought, okay, well, I'll trust this guy and um, he seems normal. <laughs> I'll follow him, you know. And um, I wasn't sure how I was going to find an idea and stuff either, but and a, lot, a lot of the questions are around that. And, um, yeah, you once you're open to finding ideas, the ideas just come to you. They just flood in. There's ideas everywhere. They're just everywhere. Um, you just have to pick them. The ideas aren't getting an idea isn't a problem, put it that way. But there's a lot of stuff in that, a lot of questions from people saying, how do I get an idea and all of that. It's not a, it's not a problem. You'll get one. You'll definitely get one. If you just follow the steps, you'll get one. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. More than one. Uh, there's another great question here. Looking back on um, your course of accomplishments, what would you do differently or more of to increase your speed of momentum or implementation to reach dollar one? That's a really good question. Um, it's a great question for a couple of reasons, but one of the reasons that I like it is because it looks on a positive aspect of it. So it's, it's um, I'll leave it at that. I like the focus yeah. of it. So well done. Um, so we're not, I guess I'm going to have you answer this first. What would you do differently? to increase your speed of momentum or implementation to reach dollar one? Ooh, what would I do differently? <clears throat> um, ask for help earlier on. That, that took a while for me to learn that and get some practice, but mm -hmm. definitely ask for help. Yeah. Um, yeah, not be shy, because I was always thinking, oh, so-and-so's busy, and like Carl, I thought he was way too cool, because in his profile photo, he's got a picture of a monkey on his shoulder, and I thought, oh, he's far too cool. I can't, you know, I can't ask help from him, you know, because he'll be too busy, he'll be so cool. And, um, yeah, I would have asked for help earlier, and, um, yeah, but that's just twenty twenty hindsight. I, I probably wouldn't change anything, really. But if I did it again now... That's what I, I would be. I would slay it doing it this time around because I because I've learned. But um, that's probably what I wish I could change was just asking for help a little bit earlier. Yeah. But you don't want to seem weak, and especially I think that's a cultural thing with New Zealand and Australia and South Africa. Like on our hangouts and stuff, we laughed at all the mindset content. It was so funny. We're looking back now, we laugh now at how we were. We were laughing, going, "Oh, all these Americans are all into the stuff." And all of us had to go back, all of us had to go back and do it and get into it. And, um, yeah, but just the seeming vulnerable and asking for help, I wouldn't, that wouldn't bother me now. But if I'd done that, I would have, I would have, uh, I would have progressed a lot faster. So I think the other flip side to that is not just being uneducated or not knowing what to do next, but I mean, this is just an entrepreneurial trait, but the idea of, I can do this, I can figure this out. Not from a, an educational standpoint, but when you're kind of in a low position, it, you always think, well, I'll get, I'll get more education, I'll get more energy, I'll, get, I'll gear myself up tomorrow, tomorrow. But then the tomorrow doesn't come for like five days, or a week, or two weeks, and then you actually find yourself in a slump. And I think that my speed of implementation not just from a resources education standpoint, has gotten faster um, because of reaching out to people sooner. Who, who am I trying to prove something to if I'm having a terrible day and I just need a little encouragement? Why wouldn't I just tell someone, okay, I'm low. I'm having a bad day. Can you just encourage me? Like, why wouldn't I... <laughs> if I have the ability to boost myself up in six hours versus six weeks, why wouldn't I do that? Or six days. So... Um, I think that that was one thing, and of course that involves building those relationships and trusting people, so um, so that doesn't just happen overnight, but that's definitely something that I would do for implementation, speeding up things. But Renata made a really good point, like we almost wouldn't go back and change anything because we fell in love with the process of growing and changing and learning, and so... 
it's hard to it's hard to want something different when you actually value what happened. That all sounds really eerie fairy, eh? But it, it's not. It, it is all about everyone's really when you're doing the course. We're talking about woo woo stuff today, but when you're doing the course, it's it's all about it's really business focused and getting through the steps and building a business, and building it. Yeah, and building it right and learning and stuff. That's what it's really all about. And the other stuff is, um, but now that we're sort of over that learning, the hump of that, we're talking about this kind of woo-woo stuff because it's such a big deal. But it is. But if there's yeah guys out there going, oh no, this is like a you know, it's not like that when you're doing it. <laughs> it's really um, it's really business oriented and it's serious. It's serious, yeah. And you can move through really fast. Like one of the guys in my team, he moved through really fast, um, Liam, and he just implemented relentlessly and he's really business focused and um, he got the mindset stuff but it sort of crept up on him without him realising and then he had this epiphany that, oh man, my mindset's changed. But um, And he's, you know, like he's in the army and he blows stuff up for fun and, you know, like he's really manly and all that, <laughs> and he's and he's and he really it really suited him too. So um, you can move through s slow or fast, really. But he he was an implementer already, whereas I wasn't. I was hesitant, and I'd think oh, I better research that first. <laughs> and he just goes, oh, I'll do this, and then he does it. So you, yeah. Um, let's hit some. You're like we're putting people off with all the woo woo, but. <laughs> I, well, I know. I just actually, you got me thinking. We've we've got probably the majority would be men on this call. So let's um, let's get some man answers for them. I'll try to be a bit more synced, black and white, and uh, we'll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you won't. Oh. I can try. I can try. Um, so let's talk a little bit of development stuff because I know that there's a lot of questions around that. Um, and the answer is that it's different for everybody. <clears throat> and so, you know, there's questions about, do you go with a technical co-founder? Do you hire someone? Do you go overseas? Um, and if you're not there yet, then I would say probably don't stress about it. Actually, definitely don't stress about it. But there are pros and cons to a lot of different things. Um, out, you know, it, it, and it also depends on where you're coming from. So, like, let's just take Amy and Renata, who are not technical whizzes, and for us to completely outsource something without having another party involved would probably be a dumb idea. So, we both have partnered with um, people who know what they're doing and can help guide our process. That's great for us. Maybe you are a developer whiz, and your scenario is going to be completely different. Um, I'm trying to be succinct. Am I covering everything? Those, I mean, those developer guys need us too, though, eh, Amy? Those those developer types, they both need us. So um, yes. they've done pretty well out of the deal as well. So, but at the start, I was really scared about that at the start. Like, oh man, how am I ever going to hire this developer? Like, I would say. I was scared about that for six months, I'd say, and then um, I just thought, well, I'm going to have to do it, so I did it, and it wasn't as scary as I thought. Like like everything, it wasn't as scary as I thought, so the development one is probably the biggest hitch, though, eh, Amy? But it's just, it's just doable. Get to that so. point, you actually evaluate your business and your situation and what your business needs. Um, what I found I did often, and I just love Josh Isaac for teaching me this, but um, he was really good. Um, probably if, you've, if you're on this call, you've probably seen him in videos somewhere else. But anyways, joshuaisaac.com if you want to know more about him. Um, but he did a really good job of teaching me about the idea of just taking information right where you are. So we are bombarded with information. And I'm a planner, so that was a double whammy for me. Please let me just take in all this information. I was trying to be five months down the road making plans. And it was it was really detrimental to my progress where I was. So he was good about just encouraging me to, if this is the stuff that I'm on right now, educate myself, soak in the content, understand it, get the principles down, and then move on to the next thing. So for those of you who are worrying about development, stop, 
everything will work out great. We'll make sure that you're all set to go when the time is right. Um, let's talk about idea extraction, validation, phone calls. There's some questions about that, emails. Renata, do you have anything you want to say about that before I do? Um, I found it, I was really daunted by that, by idea extraction and having to set it up because I didn't know how to do the group email. Like I'd never even used Skype before, before I joined the foundation. I had to learn to use Skype and track emails and all this all in the same week. And I was feeling, um, <laughs> I was just feeling fried. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was really worried, you know, would, would I be able to pull it off and and yeah, you just uh, that um, once you figure out how to, how to do it, how to streamline it, it's um it's just like a bouncing ball. You just end up with people to talk to. They're really helpful. It just happens. Um, I would I would really relish doing it again without the fear at the start. I, I would quite enjoy it. It's um. Yeah, uh, idea extractions, uh, you can choose to be worried about it or not, and uh, it's pretty fun, actually. It's pretty cool, yeah. What's but at the start, I, you couldn't have told me that at the start. Well, what's fun about it, Renata? Um, I just love it. Like, you're talking to people that you normally wouldn't talk to, and you get to find out all this fascinating stuff. I love just sitting and asking people questions. I could just ask people questions all day long and just hear them talk about themselves. I just love it. And um, you get to hear so much different stuff. I did a call the other day. I was supposed to be selling this guy a website and we ended up talking for 40 minutes about his parents who've got dementia. You know, um, it's just, uh, you never know where it's going to take you. And they give you just little nuggets of gold um, and if you don't have them, you're just guessing. So it's, it's just fun in so many ways just to talk to someone and they love it because it's a distraction from their boring day and their day job and um, it's just fun. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it now. But, um, okay. I, yeah, and it's, and it, it honestly is just like a bouncing ball. It's just so, it's so easy, it's crazy. But um, you just send the emails and... <laughs> People say yes. It's just say, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you did a really good job, Dean, um, with putting the content together. Like I, I felt like I could just follow, and I wasn't really ever used to doing that. You know, I just always felt like I had to make things happen or whatever. But I really, honestly, felt from from the beginning, like okay, idea extraction, and then you had you kind of laid out some green light niches, and of course I. You know, the market that responded to me was not exactly within those parameters, but I could see exactly why you set up the green light niche as you did. And um, I just, I felt like it was everything handed on a platter and that mm. we still had to do the work um, and we were still going to have to like personally grow and, and, and put in the time. But I felt like you did a really good job of, of laying out the steps. Um, not too many. And just enough. Yeah, it really, it really closed the gap hey, between theory and practical. It really, um, normally, if courses or education things or whatever, you get heaps of theory. But um, I don't know something about your way. It's just really, it, it really comes a hell of a lot closer to practical. It's just, yeah, it's really useful and just, it's just a roadmap. It's just ABC. It's not a lot. To figure out on, there's a lot of thinking. There is a lot of thinking and a lot of hard work and stuff. But um, boy, I mean, yeah, that's that's all there for you. That's 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 once you've got your content, it's that's pretty easy after that. You know, re relative. I'd say relatively. Yeah. For sure. And when it comes to market stuff, um, there's more markets than we can count ever. And once you start. Thinking along the lines of problem solving, 
I had a brilliant <laughs> idea today, and I thought, rain it in, Amy. Like, you have to focus on Ghibli now. You can't do that. But <laughs> So I think when I first started, I was thinking big markets, you know, medical and industrial. And then the more that I'm in it, I see little, little, teeny, tiny markets. And I think, oh, that would be such a fun idea. So there's no shortage of markets or industries and no shortage of problems. And I remember, Dane, you said that way at the beginning, like, we will never run out of problems to solve in the world. Um, so that should never hold anybody back. You're always like, I reckon once a week or once every 10 days, I'll find myself doing the maths in my head, like, mm, okay, now if I was going to do that, what would the price point be? And how many people would I need for that? And do I think I could, you know? <laughs> and, uh, it's just they're, just, out, they're just out there all the time. You just think about it all the time now in a different way. Yeah. I love it. So let's do this. Let's stay on for 12 more minutes. And in the next 12 minutes, we've had a lot of people asking questions. And I want to know, those of you that have asked questions and you've not gotten answers to them, please post again in the on the actual foundation.com forward slash live page. And we'll, we're sorting by reverse chronological. And so in the next 12 minutes, if you ask a question, it will be answered, uh, guaranteed. And... And yeah, I'm trying to think of, uh, I'm trying to think of some sort of bonus I could throw in for the next ten or fifteen people that buy the foundation. You guys have any ideas? Who us? Yeah. Oh. Um. Oh, sorry, I was reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> they could get uh, Amy. Amy will do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with them. Wow, how generous of you, sweet love. You. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Actually, that, that goes along. I was just reading Josh Isaac's comment about the mindset stuff. Um, so right at the very beginning of the foundation, we had this mindset module. I don't, Renata, I don't, don't, don't know if you remember it, but I was. Um, I was watching it or reading it or whatever I was doing and thinking, I need to remember this. I need to remember this because Dane says this is the most important part of the whole course and everyone bypasses it. So I was trying to be like the one person that didn't bypass it. Wait, what, um, what are you talking about? Which thing? The very, very first thing. And um, I, only remember a couple, I only remember a couple things you talked about, but you said this is not a competition. Do not ever compare yourself to anyone else in the foundation. And I remember that. I thought about that like 18 different times throughout the foundation because I wanted to. You know, I wanted to look and say, you know, X, Y, Z, this person was ahead of me and they beat me That's because that's kind of how it feels. But then it wasn't, there's no comparison, right? So I remember thinking that a lot. So Josh's point about mindset here in the comments, I think it's, it is really important because that's what we're going to take with us for life. And, uh, you know, this business that these 500 people on this call, you know, you're going to build a business and um, maybe you're going to rock it for the next 50 years, but probably not. So this is just one of the businesses that you're going to operate and run in your life and become a serial entrepreneur, but you're going to take your mindset with you. So it is really important. The woo-woo stuff. Okay, so where did you start your... You should have been following these comments all along. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so the non-techie, the non-techie ladies. We'll, we'll catch up, you guys. We'll figure it out. To money questions, I seriously thought that I should have paid more for the foundation. Dane did not pay me to say that. I'm just being perfectly honest with you. What I know now, how I feel about it, I should have paid more. Yeah, totally. I feel the same, but yeah. Yes, you can do the foundation while traveling. Mobile, baby, mobile. Yeah. A lot of people are doing it while traveling. A uh, great question as far as gender. Uh, this is a 
male dominated area in, as far as an industry is concerned right now. Um, and there's a question about feeling like you fit in or not. Um, if someone you, said, um, I'm looking for a true mentorship, a bond with someone, someone to keep me accountable. Can the foundation offer this? Yes. Oh yeah, good. Do you have anything to say to the gender thing? Do you have something um, dramatic to say that's nice and sweet and kind? Because I feel like this is a really sensitive issue, and I feel like right now I'm too fiery and I'm going to be just blunt. And I don't. Um, what's the gender back. issue one? Tell me the gender one. Um, the question is: I see a definite majority in gender here. What's oh. that about? As a woman, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel like I fit uh, in. It's a great question. It really um, is. I think maybe the the type of program that it is, the t the type of men that it uh, appeals yeah. to, relate well to women. Um, I just kind of fe I felt like it was overwhelming. Uh, yes, yeah, so I don't know if it's what came first, the chicken or the egg. But anyway, the guys in the program are very they relate well to women, and you're not an outsider at all. Um, it's not about gender. It's it's really not. Yeah. Uh, it never comes up. It doesn't up. even come up, eh? Right. It no. doesn't really come up, to be honest. I can understand you having that misgiving, but it, it's not. It doesn't actually come up. I like Nick. Nick's question, and he's asked a, a couple questions about. He doesn't actually really want the foundation for the software company. He wants the foundation for the limiting belief work. Do you guys have anything to say around that? Well, we both have things to say about everything. <laughs> <laughs> We're both quite lippy, aren't we, Amy? <laughs> yes. Um, we all, like I mentioned, you know, we all have... Uh, at this present moment, we can all think of something we're afraid of or, or think of a time when we ha or, like we wanted to act, but then there was another part of us that couldn't or, um, you know, we, did, we just felt like there's this wall there. And I think if we're honest with ourselves and we come up against that wall often enough, we get really, really irritated. And it's more accentuated with entrepreneurs because we're often flying solo and we're responsible to do some specific tasks. Um, I think a lot of times it comes up when, when we need to go pick up the phone <laughs> and we don't want to pick up the phone. It's like, why can't I just do this? And it's not just a matter of willing yourself to do it. There's, there's just thought process that have been built in and ways that we view ourselves and the world around us. So working through that stuff on a really basic level and examining that is really important. And working through that and I'm just going to say like rooting out the junk is probably a much more sophisticated way of saying that, but it's kind of how I I didn't at. want to talk about it. When the limiting beliefs came up, I didn't want to talk about it because... Like, I mean, when I did the foundation, because that's not how we roll here in New Zealand. We don't talk about our emotions, New Zealanders and Australians and stuff. And you just, because you feel like if you put it out there, then you're weak, you know? Um, yeah. But then there was things like, there was, um, I heard calls from Josh, and he was um, having some doubts. And like, Carl, he did like over 100 limiting beliefs or something, didn't he? It was massive. And... He was my idol, you know. I'm scared of him because he's so cool. And <laughs> then he did like a hundred and something limiting beliefs. It kind of makes you, um, yeah, it's super valuable. Um, there's a question here: Do you do you provide a framework for sales and marketing once you have your idea and are in development or have launched? Totally, you'll get the best framework for sales and marketing. You'll be better than be better than going and doing a marketing degree my opinion from someone who hasn't got a marketing degree, but <laughs> I definitely think it's incredible. All right, so um, Dion's probably going to kill me um, for offering bonuses. 
<laughs> Maybe you should stop. Dion would want us to tell you to stop right now. Yeah, lock the door before you say it. <laughs> Um, well, I just don't want to offer a bonus to the people who join now that wasn't available for the first people that joined. Um, so I'm trying to think of bonus. Okay, so here's what I've got. Um, I did a 30-minute idea extraction phone call with Andrew Warner of Mixergy, and I did the idea extraction phone call and recorded it for the sole purpose of possibly giving it away inside the foundation. So if you... Um, if there are 10 people that watch this Hangout, go to the, the program page and purchase an email me saying they want the Andrew Warner idea extraction interview. Um, I will then release it in the foundation platform for everyone. Um, and so this is a, an incredible gift to hear me do idea extraction with a very prominent guy online, Andrew Warner. And on the phone call, it was hard. You know, there were actually some points, it's not quite like that pool call, where it's just like a flow the whole time. You know, Andrew's difficult, and I had to really massage the situation and change the subject like three or four times to really get to the point where he was able, he was, by the end of the call, he was willing to part with about $2,000 for an idea that we had extracted. And I'd like to give that MP3 away. I joined the, started the call with nothing. If you're one of the first uh, 10 that sign up, you'll get it right away when you reply and everyone else will get it shortly in the platform there later. Um, so that would be a bonus. I would love to be able to offer everyone, that, the next 15 people that join, uh, a one-on-one, -on -one, but that's just not going to be possible. And But what I will offer you is this, this idea extraction MP3, and, yeah. If anything else comes to my mind that I think could be super valuable for you all, I'd love to. So if you if you know where the pot, the buy page is and you just go and open your email, you have to apply, you have to be accepted. So go in there and find that, scroll down and purchase the program, send us an email. And of course, if you're unhappy at any time for any reason at all and you've shown us that you're taking action, a complete refund in the first 60 days. And if you guys are wanting more bonuses, maybe I can even think of some more. Because ultimately, I am not persuading you to join, but <laughs> educating you. That's kind of some persuasion, I suppose. Um, any other questions come in that you guys... Ah, how have you kept your momentum during the process? Where do you get the motivation? Where do you see these questions? Like, what is wrong with me? Well, Amy... Um, <laughs> you first, if you're unhappy at any time for any reason, so yeah, on that live page. Got it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You'll find it. Well, we're up to 414, 414 likes. We're oh, just... come on, you guys. <laughs> oh, get there. 426 is on my page. I'm not even... Take 10 seconds right now. Quick, do a promo. Come on. <laughs> I, I am not even sexy with my shirt off, you guys. I don't even know. Like, you know, I'll you do the music. Bow, chicky, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get Josh Isaac. Josh Isaac's the guy you want my shirt off. <laughs> I even like this. I'm going to unlike it right now. I'm just oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was the question we were answering? Yeah, how, how have you kept your momentum during the process? Where do you get the motivation? I have some serious goals and dreams. I, how can you not? Like, I guess if you're why, um, like, what are you, what are you running after? I mean, if it's, if it's money, if it's not enough to like get you up in the morning and get you excited, and then it's probably not a big enough why or a big enough dream. And but that's not your question. Your question is what gets us up. So, um, I have some serious goals and dreams that I'm chasing. And this is part of that. And I love what I'm doing. I love who I'm working with as far as my clients. I love who I am on this journey with. So I wake up every day and I'm excited to be part of their life, find out what they're doing, encourage them, and I'm excited for them to be part of mine. So I wake up every day with those things in mind. I don't have big goals and dreams because <laughs> my imagination <laughs> my imagination is limited. Um, 
<laughs> I, just I love you. you. I think you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're not peas in a pod, are we, Amy? Um, but um, I, when I started, I wrote on a little card, and I wrote the things I wanted to get out of the program, and there was three things, and um, number one was um, do something to make myself proud of myself. And um, <laughs> I probably wrote it shorter on the card. Um, and I, that's my main dream is just to do something. So that's my main motivator is do something that makes me proud of myself. And now that I've, I've partnered with this other guy in the foundation um, called Liam, and he's, he's a bit of a legend. And, um, yeah, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to fall behind or make him think that he's made a bad choice, so that's a big motivator. Um, yeah, and just seeing if I can do it, just to prove to myself that I can do it. That's the main, that's my main motivator for me. That's that's a huge one, just to hit that uh, bar in my head, you know. It's cool. <laughs> we are not showing our guns. That was an offer here. We are not showing our guns here. You're going to have to just... Uh... <laughs> Um, find them someplace else. <laughs> we have them, though. <laughs> um, okay, we need to fly through these questions here because we are over can, our time. Can the, can the foundation be used to validate rather than extract ideas? That's from Tyson Fitzgerald. I'm just answering that because you're a shovel operator. High five to you, buddy. Me too. Um... Yeah, you totally can. It teaches you all about doing that. Totally. Yep. You can do it with an idea that you already had, but it'll teach you how to validate it to see whether it's a legitimate one or not. Okay. Are you on board with me to start at the very top of this right now and crank through these really quick? Our oh, yep. Go. Oh. Okay. What percentage of the members in the foundation are current 9 to 5ers? I think it was 60 in the survey, wasn't it? No clue. It was quite a lot. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's not a problem. A nine to five is not a problem. Yeah, good call. Yeah, I'm glad you... Am I going to get enough support if I purchase the foundation as opposed to Foundation Pro? Are my chances of success different if I'm part of one program compared to the other? Dean? For me... What? Ask the question again. I was reading some myself. Um... Are my chance, am I going to get enough support if I purchase the foundation as opposed to the foundation pro? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. the, the, in the last, last year last year with the foundation low tier had no community associated with it, and we just hated the experience. So you're going to be in the program with everyone. The only difference between pro and not is the group Q&A mentoring and the random possibilities for one-on-ones, which should be enough to support you if you're in the pro tier. Uh, but the, uh, as you've noticed with Amy, she said that her growth came from meeting everybody, and her growth came from talking to Carl. Uh, a nice byproduct of the foundation is you actually don't need me as much as you think you do. You don't need the coaches or mentors as much as you think you do. Uh, what happens is you guys start supporting each other, and so we created the lowest tier with that in mind. Erica, and if you find that you know it's too much of a stretch for you in those first 60 days, but you, you gave it a shot, didn't I? Would just, I would give it a shot, and if you don't feel that it's up to, if you don't feel happy with yourself and you've been taking the action for 60 days, just just for fun, and then you won't have any regrets. Um, the next one, effort. I'm go go ahead, Amy. Go through the next ones. No, I was going to ask you this. Um, could you? Could you expand on the um, actual operational aspects of the program? How do we connect and what types of resources are available for one out of 350 to 500 people? What setup is there to ensure we don't get lost? That's probably uh, one that would be better answered from you. Did you guys ever feel lost with the 300 people we had? No. Why not? It's not, like, it's not like a lecture. Th it's not like university where there's one guy standing up the front and talking, and 500 people sitting in the room. It's not like that at all. Mm -hmm. Are you doing head chat really... this time? 
No, there's no live chat this time. We're doing a really amazing uh, discourse forum in its place. I think you guys will really like it. Okay, so there's a discourse. It's all, very, it's all very interactive. Nobody gets lost. You're only lost if you, if you want to be. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. the discourse forum, the you you're all getting the same content. So there's a there's a synergy that you feel because you're all kind of going through the same coursework. You have access to coaches. You have access. Are you doing a team call team? Are you setting up teams this year or no? We're gonna do teams based on level. Perfect. Okay. By so group. What's that? By the Facebook group. As you, you know, that keeps everyone together and, yeah. So it's yeah. about five different levels of s sticky points. Yeah. I like the I like the point where you said uh, you only get lost if you want to be. Um, if it was, like, 10,000 people, I could see how you might start to feel lost, but I think up to 1,000 a, a people, this, this program, would, will, you'll still feel, like, visible and seen if you want to be. Now, if you're joining to wait for someone to come and pick you up and be like, all right, come with me, that's that's not going to happen for you. Now, but if you're joining the program to, to, to put yourself out there, then then like then you can expect the world to to, to completely reward you. Because Renata, how did, like, you know, you're pretty shy and things and uh, but yet as soon as you put yourself out there, like you didn't wait for someone to come and get you, right? You like put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah. Just put yourself out there in the community. You will not be lost. Because I knew that to get the value, that's what I had to do. That's why. There's no, no, no good being in there and doing it half ass. If I wanted to get the result, that's what I was going to have to do. So that's what I did. Yeah. So Nishal says, "How many college students join the foundation?" I don't know, but they do. It's it's not our it's not the majority of our demographic. <clears throat> But I definitely see it possible. Sign up bonus the next 10, a complete website solution at no cost. No thank you. Uh, but nice try. <laughs> How do you handle people being at different levels? Some people have obviously moved faster and slower than others. Um, it's wonderful. That aspect is actually fantastic um, because everyone has all these different resources. So even if someone's business is slower versus someone's business that's faster, as a person, they may have skills, super skills in an area. Uh, where someone's business is accelerated and they can use that. And as far as just like a practical level, obviously they're going to be setting up the teams based on levels. So um, it all f these some of these questions kind of are I'm 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 sensing that people are viewing themselves in light of others, and that's really natural because you're about to join a community. Um, so I just want to say that, but keep in mind that that it's it's structured so that you're taken care of and you're supported and you're um, you have all the resources available to you to be successful if you want to be. Yeah. So one Jackie says, "Am I going to get enough support if I purchase the Foundation versus the Foundation Pro?" Uh, virtually the same, except you get the group Q and A mentoring, which I think is a, and and the possibilities of one on ones, which I think is uh, me personally, I would go for the group Q and A. And the personal one on ones, because you know the group Q and A, it's actually very easy to get one on one like attention in a group Q and A. Uh, it's 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 pretty pretty impressive how much like if I get on a group Q and A, I'll be amazing how like Renata will jump on, and all of a sudden like 30 minutes later, it's like a one on one with Renata <laughs> during like during group Q and A, and and everybody loves it because Renata's question is like other people have. Uh, but the, the the other question is, are my chances of success different if I'm part of one program compared to the other? Probably, uh, but I'm not sure yet. Because last year, on our low end, we had more like an 8% success rate. In our mid end, we had like a 13% success rate. So almost double. But the low end didn't have the community support the way we have it this year. So, Jackie, we're going to be able we, – we run success metrics, and we quantify as much as possible in the foundation. So um, this year we're going to be able to measure which tier was most successful and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah. Um, and then Scott says, you know, getting lost. We've already addressed that. Sarah says, I think my limiting belief is that I have a bunch of limiting beliefs that I need to get through first. We have, that's, that's definitely a limiting belief, and see how far you get in life with that one. I hope to. I hope that you 
you shine a big big ass spotlight on that one, Sarah, and and let it just melt away. Because once you apply consciousness and awareness to limiting beliefs, things begin to change. The reason you have a limiting belief is because you have a block. And the reason you have a block is because you can't see it. A block is a block because you can't see a block. So you don't even know what you don't even know. Uh, once you apply the once you apply the lens to that thing that used to be a block, poof, your whole life just completely shifts. Um, and then are there any other questions, Amy, you wanted to answer before we wrap? No, I think we're good. Um, no, we're good. There's Sorry a couple if we more. missed anybody. Huh. Yeah, no, we don't mean to miss you at all. There's a couple I just want to just briefly touch on. What about dealing with business licenses, taxes, protecting yourself by incorporated, any of that stuff covered? Nope, not at all. We don't find that that adds any value to starting a business. It only complicates things when you're starting a business. Uh, if you want to call an attorney the, in your local area, they could probably help you with that stuff. Cause it's very straightforward. It's not. It's not rocket science. Like the magic of the foundation is how to start a business from nothing. It's not about how to. There's plenty of places you can go to do that. So we don't focus on that. Um, Al says, "How do you get into a market that's already dominated by big companies, VC funded, millions of dollars?" This is very very simple. The business that wins online is not the business that has the most money. It's the business that solves the painful problem in the most simplest way possible. So if you think about the dominant businesses online, they may happen to have VC funding, but that's not why, in my opinion, they're successful. They're successful, in my opinion, because they solve the problem in the simplest way. Dropbox is a little folder with icons. Google is one simple search page. Basecamp's a great example of project management software that has no VC funding. It got investment from Jeff Bezos, but only way down the line. And I, I believe in a paperless pipeline, we have 16 competitors in the space, and that product is doing very well for me. And it's got no venture funded. In fact, I think, Al, if you want to make a lot of money, which I don't recommend going into business for that motive, I would go, like if I was just a greedy, money-hungry guy, I would go into industries that are just getting loaded with VC, and then I would bootstrap a company and sell it to a VC fund for lots and lots of money. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so what last question. What type of content guidance do you provide beyond idea extraction? For example, do you provide a framework for sale? Oh, yeah, we answered that. Yes, we provide all that stuff. Um, and then, oh, do the foundation members gain lifetime access to the foundation? Uh, no, you don't. It ends it ends at uh, six months or so, but you have plenty of time to consume or download the content to keep with you. Do you guys have copies of the content that you keep, Amy and Renata? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, technically, you get lifetime access, but the the platform will shift. It's not going to cut. Like, we're not we're not ruthless. We're not like, all right, month six, get out. It's just more like I, we're very soft about it. I wouldn't worry about the well, you're, I guess the question is, am I going to be taken care of? And you're going to be taken really, really well care of. We're very, very well. We take good care of you guys, and you'll see it. Um, you'll <laughs> Not in the way that he just phrased that. <laughs> try again, Dane. Just try again. <laughs> How do I say that? Four hundred and seventy-eight likes. Mm. 170 likes, wow. Got to angle another 22. 22 <laughs> likes for the shirt off. Mm. I actually know, Dane, I would like to go through about eight more questions here. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. These sweet people, they've been online with us for years, it feels like right now. Well, I hope we've been able to give you something, encouragement or support or I don't even know what, entertainment maybe, anything. If you want some questions, some serious questions answered and we're being too woo-woo, just message us. Yeah, yeah, you can um, you can read to me at amy at the foundation.com. Renata, where do you want them to read to you? Facebook. Amy at the foundation.com. Oh, yeah, Facebook. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good one. You guys are awesome. It looks like a number of you guys have purchased the foundation. Thank you. That's that's wonderful. And um, there are a few other questions, but this, you know, Amy, Renata, you guys go to sleep or go do something fun. Go give your 
Go give your husband a hug. He's probably waiting for you. And mm, I just want to publicly I just want to publicly acknowledge both of you. And I want to also you guys mean a lot to me. And you know, just like you, I always question the gosh, do I belong? You know, and here I am, the creator of the foundation, and do I do I belong in this group? And and when I was walking around Vegas, it's it's quite hard to be like, wow, I've I've created this. Like, is this really me? Do I belong here? Do these am I loved? Do I belong? And I feel very loved by both of you. I feel very supported by both of you. Renata, I remember snuggling in the limo in Vegas. And <laughs> Well, it was Again, like, some, fr some phrasing could be worked on there, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bit awkward. Okay. <laughs> well, by snuggling, I mean, like, I rested my head on your shoulder, because it was like... And... <laughs> <laughs> what you happens were... in Vegas stays in Vegas, uh, Dave. You know yeah. that. You're right, you're right. Well, here's the bottom line. You women are powerhouses. Your forces of good in the world. And I can't wait to explore the, op the opportunity to create a documentary with both of you. And any new women coming out of the foundation this year, I want to create a documentary on female entrepreneurs reinventing their identity, restoring and finding strength in who they are through entrepreneurship. And I believe you women, like you two, will be a part of that project. And I just think the, high, the highest thoughts and highest regards for both of you what you accomplished, and it's not because of how much money you make or the business you build, it's because of the content of the character and the content of your heart. And so I love you both, and thank you for joining us uh, for this today. And thank you for saying yes to this. This was so much fun. Thanks for asking us. Yeah, thanks for asking. I've got a hug and reserve for you next mm. time I see you. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, have a good night. So Daniel, you can turn that recording off or end it or however that works. Do you guys have any questions for me before we uh, hit the end button? Who, us? Yeah. <laughs> How's Winnie? <laughs> <laughs>